The death of the dinosaur 66 million years ago brought with it an end to one of the greatest lineages of animals to ever walk the earth. But, as many of you already know, the end Cretaceous extinction wasn't the true end to the dinosaurs. They lived on in their descendants, the birds. Unfortunately, these feathered creatures would never again maintain their position as the most dominant animals on land. That didn't mean, of course, that they would never reach an echo of such heights. Enter the terror birds, giant carnivores that maintained that powerful predatory niche for much of the Cenozoic. Today we'll go over their birth, rise, and eventual demise. Our story starts right after the end Cretaceous extinction on Antarctica. During the Mesozoic and the early Cenozoic, the southernmost continent was a far warmer place and could support a variety of different life forms. One of these included a medium-sized, likely ground-dwelling bird. This bird would have seemed rather unassuming at first glance. This may have been, however, one of the earliest members of the group containing the terror birds and its relatives, the Caryamiforms. So what else do we know about this little bird? Not much other than it branched off from a group sister to those containing falcons, parrots, and passeriforms, which are the songbirds, shortly prior to this. We can, however, get a better grasp as to how it might have looked by looking at its extant relatives, the Siriemus. These birds are hardly the dominant creatures we know the terror birds to look like, but do resemble those animals in miniature. Indeed, they're ground-dwelling birds and possess a primarily carnivorous diet as well. Let's go back to the phrasing I used a few paragraphs ago describing that mysterious Antarctic Caryamiform progenitor. I said it quote-unquote may have been the ancestor to all Caryamiforms. Well, that's because whether or not the Caryamiform ancestor first appeared on Antarctica is a disputed issue. A 2006 study based on a femur bone seemed to peg the first Caryamiform on Vega Island, Antarctica, but that was later attributed to a non-Caryamiform called Vegavis. With that off the table, many instead attribute the Caryamiform birthplace as being South America. Still, it's not as if Caryamiforms were absent from Antarctica. Phalanx specimens from Antarctica dating back to the early Eocene from what is thought to be a Caryamiform indicate that even during the group's inception, it bore some pretty impressive species. These bones are thought to have come from an animal about 100 kilograms, part of a group of birds known as the forest rockets. Now some of you guys' ears may have perked up hearing that name, and for good reason. The forest rockets are what are colloquially known to be the terror birds. Some traits common to all forest rockets are a ground-dwelling, primarily carnivorous lifestyle, a long neck, large claws, and a massive, wicked, downturned beak. It was thought that this beak, in conjunction with its long and flexible neck, would let it effectively peck its prey to death, after, of course, kicking them with its powerful legs and feet. As we've said, while forest rockets were likely present in Antarctica during the Paleocene, they're most well known from South America. In fact, some researchers believe that they originally originated. Did I write that originally? Originally, ori some researchers believe they came from South America, with the oldest confirmed forest rocket, Peleopsteropterus, being found in early Eocene Brazil. South America proved to be a haven for these birds. Really, this continent was an evolutionary hodgepodge of several unique forms, including the carnivorous Parasodonts and the strange hoofed mammals part of Meridiungulata. These groups, alongside the terror birds, all formed a unique ecosystem that flourished as this continent was independent of North America. I should probably note that there are some researchers who believe the forest rockets could be present on other continents as well, with the Eocene general Lavocatavis and Eleothornis being from Algeria and Western Europe respectively. However, sparse fossil remains make it difficult to determine whether or not these animals were actually forest rockets. There's a bit of contention regarding the taxonomy of the forest rockets, but for the purposes of this video, we'll start by indicating two major groups of terror birds, which branched off during some time in the Oligocene. The first contains the group Coelopterinae and the Mesembryornithinae, I think, ah, uh, Mes Mesembryornithinae, and the other contains the group Patagornithinae, Physornith Physornithinae, and Forest Rockinae. Now, it might have seemed like I just blurted out a mess of gibberish to you guys, but to make things simpler, let's just call Group A the Light Terror Birds and Group B the Troop Terror Birds. As the name I just gave suggests, members of the Light Terror Birds are far more gracile in form, with many individuals resembling modern-day Seriamas in appearance. Take, for example, Coelopterus, the middle legacy namesake genus of Coelopterinae, which occupied Argentina and Uruguay. This slender animal only got to be a little over 2.5 feet tall and maxed out at 18 pounds. Big for a bird, sure, but extremely small for a forest rocket, even compared to that earlier Antarctic specimen we mentioned before. Mesembryornithinae followed in the smaller forms of the Coelopterinae, although they were on average slightly larger. 
Our next group, Physornithinae, contains another slew of large terror birds, and according to some researchers, included Brontornis, one of the largest terror birds, if not the largest, to have ever walked on Earth. This hulking creature roamed the plains of Argentina during the Miocene. At over 9 feet tall and well over 800 pounds at the largest, this was a true terror among terror birds. It should be noted that the placement of Brontornis and Physornithinae is disputed, and interestingly enough, despite this bird being so emblematic of the largest of the forest rocketae family, it may have in fact not been a true terror bird at all. Some ally it with the Anseriforms, or waterfowl such as goose, ducks, and swans. That might seem weird, but in reality it really isn't when you consider some of the lineages that are also so closely related to the Anseriforms. And from here I'm going to take a short tangent because an exploration of terror birds would be incomplete without looking into the many groups of animals resembling and often mistaken for terror birds. The forest rockets weren't the only large, flightless birds with giant beaks running around during the Cenozoic. There was Gastornithinae spread across the northern continents such as Europe, Asia, and North America from the Paleocene to the Eocene. This included Gastornis, a genus some of you may be familiar with. This was a fairly tall and chunky species, measuring 6 foot 7 and weighing almost 400 pounds. Despite appearances, however, recent studies indicate that this fearsome looking animal may have in fact been a herbivore. This, in addition to being on the complete other end of the globe, puts it in stark contrast with its forest rocket lookalikes. This beta male vegan soy munching bird would have probably used its giant beak as a tool to crack open fruits and nuts, which is way less cool than using it to break the spines of early horses. But I suppose that's a win for early horses, so good for them. Closely related to the Gastornithinae were the Doromornithidae, an Australian group present from the Oligocene to the late Pleistocene. Nicknamed the Demon Ducks, these birds were even larger than the members of Gastornithinae and even the forest rockets, with members such as Dromornis being some of the largest birds to have ever lived, reaching weights of 1,800 pounds. At that size, only the elephant bird Apiornis would have been larger. A bird that large being a predator would have been a terrifying thought, right? Well, don't worry, because Dromornis also ditched the meat and picked up the vasectomy, because this was- a, that's- I don't think that's a funny joke, I'm sorry. This is another surprisingly herbivorous megabird. That said, the herbivory of it and other members of its group made a bit more sense. The anatomy of these birds, for one, show a build far less adapted to eating meat, with less sharp claws resembling hooves, if anything, and beaks that lack the sharp point we see on animals such as forest rockets. Anyways, back to the forest rocketae. Sister to the Physornithinae are the Patagornithinae and the forest rocketae. These two groups also contain some larger genera of terror birds. This includes forest rockets, a nearly 8 feet and 290 pound bird that loomed over the plains of Miocene South America as a powerful predator. Larger still was a 330 pound Titanus, a terror bird that was present in South America but whose remains were also found all over the United States. With all that out of the way, the question remains, how exactly did these giant birds die out? The obvious and most popular explanation given over the years comes in the form of competition with other large predators. This is specifically in regards to larger cats and dogs that came from North America when the Isthmus of Panama formed around 3 million years ago in the Pliocene, connecting it to its southern neighbor. Many researchers believe these birds unable to compete with these new invaders, and failing to defend their niches, dying out as a result. This theory, however, has seen heavy pushback as of late, particularly due to the fossil record indicating that forest rockets not only seem to coexist in places where these large predators thrive just fine but even expanded their range. Take for example Titanus, whose habitat often overlapped with that of the Machairodon Xenosmilus. Neither animal seemed to be in decline, and indeed the two genera coexisted with no issues. There are other theories, such as the one that these birds died through overhunting from humans. Unfortunately, while this one offers an easy scapegoat to blame the death of these animals on, it too is built on shaky foundations. Terror birds died out well before humans reached the New World. Titanus, for example, went extinct over a million years before the first human stepped foot anywhere near it. In fact, the latest surviving terror bird, such as Coelopterus, likely died around 100,000 years ago. In the end, the death knell for these terror birds, as was the case for so many other species, was climate change. A boring answer, I know, but it really is the best possible one we have right now. Terror birds were adapted to warmer environments and so flourished in the Miocene South America. This all changed during the Pliocene and the advent of the Pleistocene, where temperatures dipped and habitats became drier overall. Even for those genera that occupied North America, they could only really be found on southern states such as Texas and Florida, 